I think one of the things that's maintained my interest in autism for so long is that we still, to this day, do not know the cause of autism. And I don't think we're all that much closer to figuring out what causes it. But what we do know is that it is not caused by anything that the parent does in terms of parent behaviors. Um, it's not caused by refrigerator mothers, cold people. It's definitely something biological, neurochemical, something within the child that causes them to develop autism. There are many theories out there as to what causes autism. And actually what research seems to be indicating is that there isn't one cause because autism isn't one disorder. Most likely what we're doing is we're lumping together a bunch of different disorders that have different etiologies or different causes and we're calling all of it autism right now. And the reason why we can't find out what causes it is because we're mixing different types of autisms together and therefore no research has ever found anything to be true for every child with autism. We find things to be true for a subset. So there's a subset of children who have particular genetic abnormalities that cause autism. There's a subset of children who seem to have been exposed to particular um, environmental toxins which may have caused autism. There's a subset of children for whom they appear to have the same genetic abnormality and that seems to make up one group of children with autism. There's a group of children who seem to have particular neuroanatomical differences, which means that their brain is somehow um, developing differently. There's children who appear to have different functioning within the brain, so not necessarily the size of the brain or the shape of the brain, but how the brain is working. A subset of children seem to have, seem to have that as their potential cause for autism. There's a subset of children who might have environmental toxins that, that they've been exposed to which has caused an autism-like um, disorder in them. Um, so most likely what we're going to find is that there are multiple causes for autism and that, in that it might really be that there's a genetic component and an environmental component. So we know right now in the popular press there's all kinds of things. It's vaccines and it's hormones and it's diet and it's it's too many heavy metals in the body and there's so many different things. Recent research has come out to say it's too much exposure to television and it's exposure to microwaves and cell phones and just about everything in the environment at some point has been, has been kind of put on the stand and said, well, this must be what's causing autism because these are all kind of new things in our environment and autism keeps increasing. But none of these things have, have yet clearly, scientifically, been proven to cause autism. But that doesn't mean that they don't play, have some interactive play, that a child has a genetic predisposition or a neurological predisposition, that then some environmental insult, some environmental toxin being exposed to microwaves, electromagnetic waves, might not then produce some type of an autism spectrum disorder or an autism-like pattern. But the fact is, is that at the moment, there's nothing that we can say definitively does or does not cause autism other than we know that it's not anything that the parent in particular does to cause autism. Here at Education Spectrum, we provide a variety of services for children, families, and educators who are working with those who have autism spectrum disorders. We provide diagnostic evaluations for children suspected of having any type of an autism spectrum disorder and also at any age. So we see children um, as young as about 12 months of age and we will assess all the way up through adulthood. Um, and we do sometimes get adults who self-refer themselves and think, hmm, I've been reading about this Asperger's in the newspaper, I wonder if I have that. And we are an agency that can provide that diagnostic evaluation. We also do psychological assessments, psychoeducational assessments. We do those through school districts and do them independently. So if parents are interested in knowing what the cognitive potential of their child is, what their academic abilities are, um, social and behavioral skills, we can do assessments for those. We also run community integration classes for children as young as three years of age up through 18 years of age. We run social skills groups. Um, again, our social skills groups run from the age of about three up to young adults, so uh, young adults who um, are 25 and younger. Education Spectrum also provides a variety of training opportunities. We provide parent training. We provide training for educators and paraprofessionals or aides, one-on-one um, -on -one aides for different school districts. 
and um, we do provide trainings in schools. We provide trainings um, in a broader setting for psychologists, speech and language therapists, and other professionals that might be working with children with autism spectrum disorders. We provide trainings related to behavior intervention, social skills development, and social skills training. We provide trainings on even what is autism and what are the best ways to educate a child who might have an autism spectrum disorder. Um, we also provide school consultation. We have contracts with many school districts where um, we, um, we go into the schools and we help work with the child in the school or we help train the staff and we're available for consultation on any types of social skills issues, behavioral issues, academic cognitive issues, environmental issues. We provide those types of consultation services to school districts.